great group and, and such a great environment. Really wanted to be here last year. Um, but I had been in the due diligence process for over three and a half years. And you don't learn a lot through success, but you do learn so much from failure. And fail often and fail forwards has always been a philosophy to create this resilience of, of us as an industry. When I acquired Float Brothers, it was such a big engine and entity um, for the industry. I remember talking with, uh, with Chris Hearn, the, um, the brother that, that was there the majority of the time because the other brother was, was outsourcing and doing the marketing. And he goes, it takes a certain personality. It takes a certain dynamic to operate a float center, to, to go into this industry because as I was talking to Beth earlier, there's so much that we're advertising, there's so much that we're talking about, is how do we find the right demographics to talk to correctly? Is it pain management? Is it preventative you know, injuries and, and sports? Talking with the superior team. Um, to know that one third or almost one half of professional sports teams now have float pods is such a great marketing tool for all of us to continue to use. And, and being at this conference and, and going through the steps of, of what are the successes, what are the wins? And we now have a new chapter of hyper resilience. We, um, we gotta feel off of the energy of what's working for other float centers. You know, when, um, when all the, the rising tides, I like that, that marketing brand, that we can all float ships together as we continue to figure out what works because the messaging is clear of what we're offering. It's amazing. But if the message can't get through the algorithms and you can't get people in on new client acquisitions, then it becomes so difficult. So understanding the consumer, understanding the personality, and then spinning back and looking and doing and checks and balances that it, it was a lot for these guys in January 29th, 2016 to open. And for any centers that have been open for a very long time, I think that is a great time to to build a center. Um, December 19th, 2019 happens to be the day that I acquired Float Brothers. Um, so one of the biggest challenges that I had um, is I was going up against a landlord that has so much assets, they vetted my process, they made me put six months of a security deposit down. They, that should have killed the deal. Three other things should have killed the deal, but instead, the silver linings and finding that positivity and that resilience is that I had 90 days before a global shutdown to relocate to a new city, to buy and acquire Float Brothers, and luckily, my six-month security deposit um, was marketing money that if I would have put into the market at that time would have been a waste, you know? It will, so, so in these hyper-resilient times of... Um, of being creative, of bouncing off walls, what's working, what's not. And it could be the best message in the world, but if it doesn't get through and you can't target it and it's not timed to the right way the, the sun sets on the certain seasonality of, of the business, it's, it's tough. And I think January 29th, 2016 is a great time to build a center. I think December 19th, 2019 is a great time to buy a center and a better time to do either one of those things is today. There are so many resources here for me as an owner to take over a big entity, um, understand this business and vet the process of our consumers, of, of what we have to offer, that it's amazing. The, the sky is the limit to getting people in the pods. And, and I think that's the biggest thing that I wanna talk about is, is the process of getting a new center because every time we're focused on something else, we're focused on a pump that's gone out, we're focused on an employee, the timing of, of the hallmark of our business, the nature of our business is you know, Mother's Day and Father's Day and, and Christmas and the seasonality is huge. And the sustainability is, is one of the biggest parts is how do we continue to protect the burnout? How do we set the boundaries so that we have the energy to delegate to our team so we can show up to our best selves? Um, one thing about my market is that it is hyper seasonal. So in, in talking, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of pluses and minuses to four million tourists coming each year. Um, but if, 
But if you advertise too much to the tourists, uh, because traffic patterns and, and migrations are, the, the locals don't want to come. So how do we find the balance of supporting to the locals um, when they don't want to come during the summer and the summer is so expensive to be able to market to the tourists? Um, th the thing that I can feel the most from being six years um, in business in the last two of what, what I've done um, is that there's a tipping point to all things. There's an apex. And, and being here and finally interacting with everyone is where is that apex? Um, from 1993, Peter has done 310,000 floats in the UK. I've done 20,000. And those numbers mean that, yes, there's a novelty phase. There's a six month, one year startup, a lot of people, a lot of traction. But on year six, when my center's full, 60, 70% full most, most days, um, that's that apex and that tipping point. That if you have the right ingredients and the right team and resources like we all have in this room, let me tell you my failures. Let me tell you what didn't work for me and let me learn from you guys because it's about creativity. It's about getting through the algorithms and it's about what engine to hit at the right time. I, I lack an email marketing. That's, that's a weak point for me and I have a 9,000 person email database. So I don't want to over advertise to those people but how do I get the right messaging out to, to time it that I can't send an email out during the summer because the summer has so much traffic um, and I don't want to consistently be selling. So that balance of information and education, um, one of the biggest things I have to say is that you got, we have to get people into the centers, you know, because without a first experience or a new client acquisition, um, they're not going to get back to that next experience. So what is it that we are selling? Is, is floating a vitamin for preventative health or is it an aspirin once your back's already hurt? Um, and, and the thing that I, I want to put a spin on is however we need to get people into our centers, there's an entertainment aspect to it. I have a four pod center, I have no other modalities, so it's funny when, when one couple will come and they'll be on a date, uh, and as they watch the video and get in, another couple will come in, and it's almost like a double date. And if you know more females drag their, their male counterpart to float, um, let's have it be entertainment. Let's accept that it's entertainment to try something new. And then once we get them in to do to be entertained on something odd and new and unique, then, then the education begins. And as there's so much information coming at everybody, um, that, that education, um, we can't overwhelm them. It's stepping stones, you know? Nobody needs to know on the first float, don't ping pong off the walls. You know, that's, that's float two, float three. Pat dry your face before you get in, less, less chance of, uh, of irritation. So a few numbers here, thank you to Float Helm, which just helps my life be much easier and, and more organized. And, and talking about wheelhouses and delegation, I only have 11 minutes to go, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep, it, keep it on target. But what this shows is um, half of the time, half of the people are coming back again. So um, the, the volume of, of at my lowest was last year, 143 floats. Uh, 60 minutes and uh, 70, 90 minute floats. And then we, we've had a big April. Um, and and these, are, these are my numbers, a big part of, my, uh, of what I inherited being in a, in a big military population is um, they set up a program that Tuesday, Thursdays, and Sundays we give free floats away to any veteran that has PTSD. And we've got 250 members that have come through our center. Um, and we've got about seven to 10 that have um, anywhere from 80 to 110 floats in five years. We don't want anything back. We just want them to have a lighter life, a lighter load because they put themselves on the line and now they've got consequences for their life that they have to deal with. So as part of a responsibility of, of a float center owner is that a big part of the altruism and giving back um, is, is part of Part of my model, you know, being that I've got four pods and I want these pods to be used is, is part of my, what I inherited was that, that PTSD program and that education. That's part of my demographic. Um, coming up 
on Wednesday, I'm gonna have my fourth um, Expecting Mothers Float Free Day. Uh, my center is open six days a week, 12 hours a day, um, and Wednesdays were closed for maintenance and filter cleaning and all that. But what I've turned Wednesday into is what I call an opportunity day, where any group, any demographic that can come, we can use that day as a unique opportunity to see what the science is between pregnancy and floating. I, I've got articles that have been written um, that everything is split test, everything is A-B testing, and when six months, eight months later, you're able to get somebody that says, hey, thanks, I, I just came in and bought this float. I floated when I was pregnant eight months ago, and I got these great benefits, but I got an education because you opened your doors on a day you were closed, and you gave away 24 free floats to expecting mothers. Um, and and when, when pregnant mothers come in, the, the simple things of, of we want to encourage more mothers to float, right? So we all know we're doing deep discounts on different timing, but, but a great thing is that anybody that is an expecting mother that comes in and buys a float, let's give the, the child that's going, you know, and the encouragement of the mother, let's give them a free float so that mother can come back and it's less about the economics and more about the execution. And that's the biggest part too about the float business is we have to execute and we have to pivot and we have to keep executing and pivoting because maybe it's the best message in the world but if it doesn't get through the algorithms, it doesn't work. And if it's not set to the right time, that's another factor. So I need help and resources from this room and I want people to call me and reach out to me on what works and what doesn't. I want everyone to know the content for Float Brothers that, that we are using, I want to be shared and, and everyone to continue to grow together because this industry is really about the entertainment aspect to get people in the pods and it's the education aspect to retain them and get them back in for their next floats. Beth, thank you for touching on the vision aspect. Why to get into this business? It's not gonna be easy, it's gonna be extremely hard, but you know, we all wanna help people. And, and that's, that's a big part of it. But as we help ourselves and, and float once a week, I got my start in understanding floating because 10 years earlier, I was introduced to sweat lodges and I spent a lot of time in the Anipi. I have, first of all, can I get a show of hands of anyone who's ever been in a sweat lodge or an Anipi? Great group, great, great demographic. So, Think about what the sweat lodge does in retrospect to the float pod. Um, I've been doing this for so long and, and this lasts about a month. You know, you go into a sweat lodge and you just come to nothing. You're just trying to breathe and, and completely reset, but you're able to take a month or two weeks and use the sweat lodge and that experience of purging your bloodstream to not be so stressed about other things. So when I was introduced to the float business, um, I was like, the float pod is very similar to a sweat lodge, but easier for people to try it. Um, because the sweat lodge is a very unique tool that not a lot of people are willing to try. And if you think trying to educate people on what floating is, try to get people to go in the sweat lodge, and it's a whole nother experience of, you know, what does that mean? And, and finding that, Finding that vision and finding that why and that motivating factor of, of what you can deliver as a human, what boundaries you can set, what longevity you have to, to not burn out and to know that you are showing up as your best self is that as we read and recognize different clients, um, each person's gonna need a different part of us and our tone and our timing and, and staying positive enough to have the right tone and the right openness and the right body language to receive what they're saying. I mean, I'd say once a week, I'm almost like moved to, moved to tears at some of the stories and some of the feelings on, on the front side before people float. And then as they come out, we all get this amazing reward from the benefits of, of the faces of people that have floated. We've all gone through and been in this deep REM state of why this works, of why to get into this industry. Um, and as Beth being an encourager and me being a promoter and finding these tools of this room to, to motivate others and you know, protect others from burning out, um, it's, 
it's so much potential and so much, so much vision behind it um, that, you know, the content creation side, the 20,000 customers, the algorithms of different, different towns and, and trying to push in the timing. You know, this is one of my favorite slides that um, my team created. And you didn't come this far to only come this far. We all know that the pod is a reflection of ourselves. Every time that we float is another moment to get more self-esteem, to get more encouraging aspects because floating is, is a benefit in itself by the pure energy boost. Um, I worked with VJ, the float guru, with, for quite some time. Great, great person, great, great knowledge. And for him to help break down what time of day and what day of week and what personality and what should we be searching for in our float so we can set these intentions um, is creating the power that when people come in and they're so flustered and they don't and they just want to collapse and they're late and all this stuff and you say, okay, you're not ready to float yet. We need three more minutes for you to decompress. We've got the nature channel here. We've got a pan drum here. Would you like to do a connect the dots or a coloring book? Because if we can spend that five, 10 minutes in the lobby uh, interacting and not feel rushed or hurried, then we can maximize and not burn that time out inside of the pod. This is one of the most powerful slides of, of what we're doing in this business is that we're taking the mindset of the physical realm and we are lifting people's spirits in water of, of here's your limitations, here's, here's life's circumstances, is the chair. What are you gonna do about it? You know, let's not let that define you. Let's take all of our, all of our pent up fears and stress and anger and, and entitlement or whatever anybody's going through and let's bring these things to the pod. Let's make help available so that we've got the resources that we can offset this 24 seven news cycle. I'm addicted to technology just as much as the rest of everyone. So it's, it's finding what can elevate you, elevate others around you. Um, and the author Malcolm Gladwell puts it really well in, in Tipping Point, um, or one of his books. He says, it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert or to even start to know about a topic. I'm 4,000 hours in and I don't know much. You know, the one thing I, the one thing a professor told me is that the purpose of, of education and college and, and higher learning is the process of learning how to learn or, or unlearn or relearn. Um, and the, the 4,000 hours behind the counter, I came into this business understanding demographics, understanding marketing, putting my tools and my wheelhouse together. Um, and, and seeing this pod as something that is helping to rewrite people's lives, people's maps, and, and my own story as well. I float two to three times a week. I actually sleep in my center um, probably four times a month. Um, skateboard there, I live five blocks away, um, and I skateboard there to 2 a.m. in the morning, and I will sleep in the pod till seven, eight in the morning, and I won't sleep, um, I won't sleep on land that day. And what I can tell you from those longer floats and from, from high pressure stress and from putting myself in an environment is that I am able to come out and add more time to the quality and the value of letting the body reset and letting the mind go and adding more self-esteem to my life as well as reframing the next steps and the next processes. So as business owners and as, as float entrepreneurs, the value that you can use in the pod to project the, the next step, I, my staff, I, I encourage them to float, that I, I give them their hourly rate to float. So not only do they float for free, but they, they get paid to float. Um, and, and that's the encouraging aspect of what do we gotta do to get the people trained correctly, to not sweat the small stuff, to not burn out, but to let this industry lift up and connect to other aspects of, of life and dynamics and business. Is there so much room for education 
and getting past that entertainment level of we are so important to this community, to this world, to this movement right now that um, don't burn out. Take the energy, take the motivation, take all the resources here and let your light shine bright. Get your float centers to the point where everything is working in, in synergy and, and passing that apex and the tipping point. Let me tell you my wins, let me tell you my losses. I wanna hear what's working for you um, and I wanna share what's working with me. And I wanna educate and lift up everybody and we gotta have some entertainment and some funny stories. So um, thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you.